All right, guys, so this is the Tuesday, the 24th workout. It's primarily leg, so we've got uh, two exercises for leg. Uh, the rest is uh, functional. So the first one will be dumbbells overhead forward lunge. So on the overhead forward lunge, remember that the front leg is going to be 90, the back leg is gonna be 90. So if you have any shoulder rotator cuff issues, you may wanna turn the bells to where they are in a neutral position versus a pronated position. I drop into 90 in the front, 90 in the back, and I push off with that front heel. Make sure that you're dorsiflexing that front foot, and I should still be able to see my front laces as I do this one. Okay, um, now it's gonna be up to the individual of how wide you're gonna have to make your bells. Remember that if you are looking off to the side, as you drop, you wanna make sure that your arms are not angled, your arms that ideally are perpendicular from the floor in your sagittal plane and your frontal plane. Lower back supermans. Lie on your back, legs are floating, thighs are not touching. I come up, hold, and then when I come back down, my goal is to also have my thighs floating and my arms floating extended out. Now, if you want to add a little bit more resistance, so this of course is the basic mod here, a little bit harder. Here, I fully extend it. So I have a really long resistive arm, but you can also grab a single dumbbell to create a little bit more resistance also. So, uh, and if you don't have a lower dumbbell and you, some of the, the guys got heavier dumbbells, which is gonna be hell on the overhead uh, lunge, you can grab something as simple as a can. I mean, or even two cans for that matter. You'll get something out of it. Um, a, uh, a gallon of milk is about eight pounds. So you can try that. Um, now, the push-up around the world is the next exercise. So since you don't have other people necessarily in this one, although if y'all are doing um, interactive, doing like a Zoom, you can do it. But for a single person, you're gonna drop down for one push-up, then you go down and hold, then you go down for two, hold, then you do your three and hold. And the lockout number will be, um, We've got six for uh, for Tuesday, so uh, so that's the gist for the push up around the world. Now on the dumbbell sissy squats, you're definitely going to need something to hold on to. I suggest um, be careful of how you bend. If you haven't been practicing this to where you're like at 90 now, try not to go all the way down where it's like basically butt to heel. Butt to heel puts a lot of stress on connective tissue. So so start with something pretty simple where. You're on the balls of the feet. My feet are hip width apart. I have a slight tilt back. I want a straight line from my knee all the way to my shoulder. So when I drop, the common mistake is people bend at the hip. I want to push the hip back and I want to drop into a 90 and then use my quads to pull me back up. So I'm contracting my glutes, I'm contracting my core. I have a slight tilt so I can contract and then I use those quads to come up, okay? You want to use weight, try to put the weight centered in between uh, the glutes, if you will. So right in the middle. If you put it off to the side doing three sets, you're going to have to do four sets to even it out. Okay? Last thing you want is to walk funny, so that could be your swagger, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, the next exercise after the dumbbell sissy squats is going to be bike, bicycle crunches. So the bicycle crunches, I'm extending out and I'm crossing over. Now my goal is not just to have my elbow touch my knee. My goal is to try to pull the knee up as high as I can get it, crunch enough to where my elbow can get on the outside of the knee, and I'm rotating. By doing that, it's gonna force a lot more oblique and intercostal to activate, not just rectus abdominis. And that's the whole goal of creating a strong pillar core, is to be able to not only have that strong lower back that you're trying to get with your uh, supermans. Um, also your oblique and intercostal, so basically you're twisting. Um, and um, that torsal rotation is oblique and intercostal and it activates a little bit of lower back. Uh, Straightforward, breaking sagittal plane movements for core, that's working on pretty predominantly just rectus abdominis, which is in the front. Um, 
your Metcon today are climbers. Now on the climbers, if anybody else is watching this that's not of a member, these, I don't care whether you saw it in Shape Magazine or not, these, those are not climbers. Plant, those are climbers. Forcing your knee up in between your elbows is way harder than just having your leg float and keep moving. I mean, it's definitely cardio, but when it comes to local muscle endurance, it's minimal. Okay guys, uh, that's Tuesday's workout. Good luck.